Early in the morning this Sunday on Halloween, NASA and SpaceX will launch four astronauts to the International Space Station aboard the third operational crewed mission with SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now, here to talk about the mission is NASA Launch Integration Manager Daniel Forrestal. Daniel, so nice to have you. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Now, Crew-3 is an incredible next step in the continued collaboration between NASA and SpaceX. Could you continue or could you tell me a little bit about this relationship and how missions like this happen with NASA's commercial crew program? Absolutely. It, it really is an incredible relationship and, and we're seeing the commercial crew program uh, really come to fruition of what we had envisioned it. Uh, you know, we, you, you said this is our third mission, our third operational mission with SpaceX. Uh, we continue to learn, we continue to develop that relationship, and we're getting those, uh, those reliable, those safe, there's cost-effective flights up to the space station that we had set out to do 10 years ago with the commercial crew program. Uh, and then in addition to that, we're starting to see uh, low Earth orbit open up for, for other customers other than NASA, which was always our goal with, with this program. And so seeing all that happen all right now is fantastic. Absolutely. Now, things seem to be really looking great for Sunday's launch, but what is still left between now and launch time that people like yourself and the other teams working on this mission still have to check off their list, still have to double check? Uh, it, it's really just dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. You know, we're, we're constantly vigilant, constantly uh, just making sure that any last little issues are squashed, that we have full understanding of, of the vehicle that we're launching. Uh, we've got our final readiness reviews. And then, you know, the big thing that no one can control is the weather. And so we've got all eyes on the weather. You know, there's multiple weather briefings to make sure that it looks good, not just here uh, at the launch site in Cape Canaveral, but also all up and down uh, the, the flight path into space. Absolutely. Now, what do NASA and SpaceX hope to gain and to learn by sending a new crew of astronauts for a mission like this, a six month mission in space aboard the space station? What do these missions accomplish when it comes to not just exploration, but the science? Yeah, it really is all about the science. Uh, the great thing about this, this partnership that we have with the commercial crew uh, providers is that we get to launch more astronauts to the space station and, and more hands equals more science. And once they get up there, uh, there's a variety of, of science being done from uh, material science to health technologies, to earth observation studies, uh, to in environmental studies like, uh, like water filtration systems, all that benefit uh, folks down here on earth. Uh, and then on top of that, it's about learning uh, about long duration space travel. And, and that's the stepping stone to the Artemis program and to getting uh, men and women back to the moon. Absolutely. Now, looking towards launch day as we very quickly approach it, what are some of the most critical moments for a mission like this on launch day? Uh, from preparations to after those uh, engines finally ignite, what are some of the most critical moments to you? Uh, can I say all of them? Uh, <laughs> It, 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 you know, it's everyone's on high alert. You know, you've been training for this for really years uh, to, to call to come to this moment. We got to be ready. Uh, we have a, a team standing by for any contingency. We've got a whole uh, cadre of people on both the NASA and SpaceX side looking at all the data to make sure that everything is safe. Uh, and there really is no moment to relax uh, until, you know, once they get safely into orbit, you take a moment and you exhale. But then it's right on next to the operations of, of docking, and, and that's no easy task either. Certainly not. Now, could you tell me a bit, so you are a launch integration manager. Could you tell me a bit about what that entails for a mission like this? A absolutely. It's uh, in the lead up to launch, uh, I'm working to make sure that uh, all of the operations that you see on day of launch run smoothly. Uh, it's a choreography amongst many players and partners from SpaceX and NASA to everybody here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, you know, you, you see it on, on TV, the walkout and, and the, from the suit room, the convoy out to the pad, uh, all of that just takes coordination. And so we got to make sure all those operations run smoothly. And then uh, on day of launch, I transitioned to be the launch rescue director. So I'm in charge of a team of folks who, if there's an emergency on the pad, we make sure the crew and the SpaceX closeout crew get out safely. Being kind of launch emergency director, that sounds like it must be kind of a high pressure job day of launch. What 
is that like for you and your team? Have you done this for the previous SpaceX crew launches? We have. Uh, it, it is it is high pressure. You know, you're waiting there, ready to go at a moment's notice if anything goes wrong. We train for it. We do dry runs where we pretend something goes wrong uh, on the tower, and we practice sending in rescue work, rescue folks in to get them. Uh, but uh, we joke that we do all this we do all this uh, training, but we we hope that our job is the most boring on day of launch. <laughs> I hope so as well. Um, I, I'm just so fascinated by that aspect um, because it's such an interesting and critical position the day of launch. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious kind of uh, if you've spoken to the astronauts and how they feel. Um, obviously, this is not the first operational crewed launch and up to date, they have all gone spectacularly well. But are there, there still nerves amongst the crew? Are there still nerves uh, amongst the other uh, the other people on your team? Uh, I can tell you that there are certainly nerves uh, amongst the people on my team and myself. Uh, we've spoken to the crew, we give them at some last minute briefings and they certainly seem ready. Uh, they, they sound ready to go and they understand what, what needs to be done. Uh, and, and even though there's nerves, we train for this so much that when you get there on the day of, on the day of launch onto console, uh, it's game time and we're ready to go. Definitely. Now, what does the success of missions like Crew-3 spell, not just for the future of the commercial crew program at NASA, but commercial spaceflight in general? Because if Crew-3 is anything like its predecessors, it will be a success. Uh, yeah, and we hope that success continues. Uh, the, I mentioned earlier that we're hoping that uh, we open up low Earth orbit for folks even beyond NASA. You know, We want it to be a, a thriving low Earth orbit economy and uh, it's, we've got three rookies on crew three and those three, uh, new, new folks in space will be the 599th, 600 and 601st, uh, people that have made it into space. And I really think that in this generation, we're just going to see that number explode and we're laying the groundwork for that with the commercial crew program and, and crew three. Absolutely. Looking a little bit further out from low Earth orbit, uh, do you think that flights like this and the expansion of, you know, commercial space in low Earth orbit, do you think that sets us up and supports the return, the human return to the moon with Artemis? And if you could even look further than that to Mars? Uh, absolutely, it does. And, and it does so in multiple ways. Uh, first, you've got the space station and we have to keep that running because that's our test bed. Uh, for Artemis and for beyond. We need to understand how humans themselves work in low Earth orbit. They're part of the science and the experiments up there. And in order to, to gain that understanding, we have to keep going to the space station. And flights like this with SpaceX allow us to do that. And then the other piece is, now that we've got this relationship and these reliable flights up to low Earth orbit, uh, NASA is able to put resources into other programs like the Artemis program that will get us back to the moon and beyond. Now. Recently, um, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson spoke about the future of space stations in low Earth orbit. And once the International Space Station is retired, moving towards commercial space stations. And just this past week, we saw the company Blue Origin make their announcement um, of the development of Orbital Reef. Uh, I, I'm curious what you think missions like this might look like with commercial space stations? Will we see companies like SpaceX partnering with NASA to launch to other companies' uh, space stations? I think it's going to get a little bit interesting and I'm curious, having seen this happen multiple times over, what you think that might look like? Um, I, I think you described it really well. I think it's gonna look like a partnership between NASA and the private industry, which is really what we want. We don't want NASA to be the only company that these uh, private industries are sending into space. And so the more that we can enable uh, that low earth economy that involves multiple players, uh, the better. And, and so the more that we can just enable it with NASA, we've got the experience and help enable these, these private companies to, to get this going, uh, the happier we're gonna be. Absolutely. So I just have one final question for you. Um, and it's, what are you most excited about in the next few days? Uh, the, when that clock hits T0 and that rocket blasts off and, and you see a few minutes later that they're safely into orbit, uh, there's no feeling like it. It's, it's the most excited feeling of months of work come to fruition. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me, Daniel. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to see this thing blast off successfully and safely on Sunday. It's going to be spectacular. Yep, hopefully. And it's been great talking to you.